Howard Marks, one of the greatest investors out there, owns 65% of Tor, which is one of the world's leading carriers of refined oil products. And the history of this investment is quite fascinating. He bought Torm in Q2 2018 for around $7 per share and instantly gained control over the company by buying over 50% of the shares. He later on added some more shares, but he never paid more than $9. So right now he made something close to 300% on this investment. But what is really fascinating is that in just the last 12 months, he got his $7 per share back for dividends. So he got all his money back in a matter of just few years, but he did not sell a single share. And now he controls a company with a market cap of over $2 billion for free. So it is clearly a great investment for Howard Marks, but can it be a great investment for us? Let's find out. And first, let's take a look at the recent results. The revenue is up by 13.6%. Net income is up by 74.5%. Cash is up by 71.3%. And the debt is down by 5.9%. That is quite impressive. But these are only short-term results. And let's not forget that it is a very cyclical industry. So let's take a look at the big picture and analyze TORM. Individual Insiders, that is an X. 0.7% of the company is owned by individual insiders. And we would like to see this number over 2%. But of course, in this case, we know that Brookfield Corporation through Oak Tree Capital run by Howard Marks controls this company. So if something will not go the way they would like it to go, they can almost instantly change the management. So in theory, they should take very good care of the shareholders. And are individual insiders buying? That is an X. We see no transactions of any kind from individual insiders. And do super investors own this company? That is a check. One super investor owns this company, and that is, of course, Howard Marks and his found Oak Tree Capital. And is he buying right now? That is an X. Since the end of 2020, we don't see any transactions from super investors. Return on invested capital, that is an X at 0.6% 10-year median returns. And we want to see this number higher than 10%, so that is not very good. And it is mainly due to the cyclical nature of this business. For example, in 2022, the return was over 24%, but just one year earlier, it was minus 2.1%. So the swings are pretty big. And free cash flow growth? That is an X. There is no growth in the last 10 years. And it is the same story as with return on invested capital. The cash flows are all over the place. So the swings are just the norm in this business. And what do we know about net profit margin? It is a check at 47% and the industry average is 15.2%. But as with everything else, right now the margins may look great, but in 12 months time, they may be terrible. And now let's take a look at share buyback. It is an X with 66.7% new shares issued in the last 10 years. So uh, that is not great. Let's take a look at the debt. It is an X. It would take 2.2 years to pay the long-term debt with a last year free cash flow. And we would like it to be under two years. What we know after looking at all of those data points is that it is a very unpredictable business that may in one year go from losing money to being a money printing machine. So the cyclicality is something we just have to consider. 
The dividend yield is 27.7%. So in the last 12 months, shareholders got $7.01 per every share through dividends. That is absolutely great. And the payout ratio? That is an X at 73%. And we want to see it somewhere between 20 and 50%. But as with everything concerning this company, this number may change very fast. Why? Well, let's take a look at the dividend growth. It is an X because the dividends are all over the place. And the reason for that is that they pay dividends that are dependent on the results of the company. They look at the cash position and they keep $1.8 million per every ship they own. And anything over that, they distribute through dividends. So not only the growth of this company, but also its dividends are not really predictable, at least in the short term. Price to earnings ratio is 2.7. It is very low. This company seems extremely cheap. But let's remember that it is a cyclical business. So the earnings just shot up but in 2021, they were actually losing money. So the PE ratio may not be very helpful. To properly value TORM, we have to estimate its growth for the next 10 years. And we will make three scenarios, low, medium, and a high one. So in the low scenario, we will estimate a decline of 5% for the next five years, and then no growth. In the medium, no growth for the entire 10 years. And in the high scenario, 2% growth for the first five years and then 3%. Now, why did I use such estimates? Well, the global tanker shipping market size is estimated to grow annually by around 4.4% between 2022 and 2027. But of course, these are only predictions and they may be wrong. So even in the high scenario, I put much lower numbers. And with such estimates, the intrinsic value in the low scenario is $32, in the medium scenario, $42, and in the high scenario, $51. But these are not the prices we should be looking for because we have to always add a margin of safety. I use a 30% one. So with such a margin, we get in the low scenario $22, in the medium $29, and in the high one $35. And the current price is around $25. So only the low scenario with the margin of safety is in the red. But in case of such a cyclical industry, we have to be very careful with our valuations. The problem is that we are using free cash flow as a basis of our valuation. And free cash flow of this company is all over the place, depending on the quarter we are looking at. So I try to be conservative. I use the free cash flow from 2022 because the current one is even bigger. But is it enough to actually determine the real value of this business? That is hard to tell. Let's remember that Howard Marks bought this company at around $7 per share. It seems that Torm can be a great investment in the long term. It may grow, it may occasionally pay incredible dividends, but as shareholders, we would have to be prepared to see a lot of volatility. We would have to be prepared to just think about it as a business we own that we don't want to sell. So we don't care what price the market is offering. And that can lead to great returns, but can also be extremely hard emotionally. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.